I don't know about you, but the only reason I usually lose a trade is because of myself. And it's because I didn't close out when I hit my target or I was in a losing trade and I didn't take my stop loss or something that has to do with myself. So a couple years back, I set out on a goal to just automate my trading and it's the absolute best strategy I've ever, best thing I've ever done in my life because now I can code algorithms and you can too, I promise you. If you haven't started coding yet, if you're trading, hey, you know, you can increase your profits by 10, 20, 30, 100% just by coding them out and saying, hey, computer, you do this for me. Because instead of you panicking when it goes down, the computer might buy. Or based off of whatever rules you put in there, maybe it sells. Maybe it takes a stop, you know, it takes a stop out, or you know, it takes profit at this point, or whatever. The thing is, is computers can execute without the emotion. And the only downside of humans is we we have emotion. And you have to use the bathroom, you have to eat. What if you're in a trade and you need to exit, but you gotta go, you gotta go to the bathroom or you gotta eat lunch or you have a family thing going on, right? So there's so many reasons. I don't need to sit here and convince you to learn how to code. I think if you're on this video, you're a uh, everlasting learner and you're never gonna stop until you get there. So this is just one of the best ways I've been able to pull alpha out of the market is learn how to code and code your algorithms to trade for you 24 7 365 because you are literally unstoppable there's not many people out here that are going to spend their time searching through youtube for new strategies or algorithms but you're doing that so if you can take the best of you which is you know your persistence and you put it into code to trade for you it removes the only downside of me and you, which is, hey, we're humans. We gotta sleep, we gotta eat, we gotta go to the bathroom, we have emotions, we think it's gonna go higher or lower, you know? We think, right? Computers don't think, they just do. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is, you know, I'm a regular dude. I, I'm not a mathematician, I didn't go to Harvard, I didn't get an engineering degree, none of that stuff. I think that's all, you know, mystical stuff that they want you to believe just so they can say, hey, you can't be an algo trader because you don't know how to, or you didn't go to Harvard, or you don't, you're not a mathematician, yada, yada. Well, guess what? I'm algo trading 24-7, 365. Every single day, I make a new algo, and I'm gonna share it here with you on this channel, and I'm just gonna write an algo here just to show you that like you don't have to be an expert to do this. You don't have to be a crazy coder. You don't have to you know, spend years and years of your life to figure this out but you're diligent enough, you're already persistent enough that you're gonna find a way to pull alpha out of this market. And in my opinion, you know, I'm a decade plus entrepreneur. Uh, in my opinion, this is the best way to pull alpha out of the market. And the market is the, the best business if you figure it out. So let's just go ahead and start coding. You know, um, I really appreciate you being here. It's super cool because you are unstoppable you will figure this out and let's just go ahead and start coding this out i'm going to build a strategy today that is it'll look at the, the overall trend past maybe 50 100 200 days we'll get into that later and then we'll decide which way the trend is going you know from my eyeball in this looks like we're hitting long-term support kind of um we're obviously in a, a downtrend but it might bounce here you know, I I can see that, right? But I'm thinking, and I don't really want to think. I want, I want to program a computer to just do it all for me because that's just so much better. It's just a, such a better lifestyle. I don't have to sit here and look at these charts all day. Um, but yeah, this is the daily chart. So my strategy here I'm trying to build is, it's not too hard. Uh, it's going to look at the last 100 days or so. Actually, it'll probably be about 20 days. So I'll build an SMA, a simple moving average, and it will tell me which way is the trend. And if the trend is, you know, bullish, we're going to look for longing opportunities. But if it's bearish, we're going to look for shorting opportunities. Now, this is a Bitcoin chart. I will, will go ahead and pull up, let's see, I'll pull up my Femex account here because i actually don't want to trade bitcoin i would actually rather trade one of these altcoins 
based off of Bitcoin. So it's a little weird, I know, but it tends to work. And the reason I do that is just the altcoins are a little more volatile. So, you know, they typically follow Bitcoin. So I might even go ahead and see what the trend is with Bitcoin and then also the altcoin. They're going to be similar, but I'm going to look at the trend and then I'm going to place my buys. I'm going to build like a... I'm going to build a 20 SMA again, but I'm going to have it on the 15 minute. So the first SMA is going to be a daily SMA for the last, I think, 20 days, maybe 15, 20 days. We'll figure it out when I get there, test it out. And then the second SMA is going to be a 15 minute SMA for 20 periods or so. And the reason I'm going to put this SMA in is because this one is going to determine where I'm going to buy it. So one determines which way we're buying. If we're opening it as a short or a long, that's the daily one. And then the second parameter I'm looking at is the 15 minute SMA. And that's where we'll place our bids. I'll probably, I'll probably place two buys and they're going to be above and below that SMA. So pretty simple strategy. I'm not going to use a stop loss. I'm going to use a uh, kind of just a stop loss in the sense of size. So I'm just not going to, I'm not going to make my positions too much. I will use some leverage. Let's go ahead and see what I have here. So I only have a hundred bucks in my account and that's probably good because you know, this is a, a new strategy, but once this strategy proves itself, we can go ahead and level this up to probably a thousand, two thousand. Um, I like to diversify. I have tons and tons of strategies. So I try to keep keep it in the low thousands and then you can scale with other strategies. But that being said, let's just dive into it. I've got this great cup of coffee here, so I'm sorry if you hear me slurping a little bit. It's my favorite coffee and I'm going to need it because we're building an algo here. We're building it from scratch. Uh, I think I went over everything. You know the strategy. Look at the trend from the SMA. We're going to do the 20 day SMA. And then we're going to place our buys or shorts, our buys or sells to enter along the 15 minute SMA. So we need to create two SMAs. That'll be one of the first things we need to do. I'm going to use CCXT, which is a library in Python. And I'm just going to get started because I think this is this is going to be good. Um, a lot of people are scared right now. Like this is a, a downtrend. I personally think I'm not going to think I'm not going to make any opinions. You know, from from my eye, it looks like it's going to it's going to bounce. But that being said, if it doesn't bounce, this is where humans go wrong. Like if it goes down here and it's, it starts falling, if I keep thinking it's going to bounce, I would keep longing it. But I just want my code to do it for me because I, at the end of the day, if I program this strategy or whatever strategy I do run, then the code runs it and it is what it is. You take out the emotion. For example, like I'm sure you've been in a strategy uh, in a trade before where it's like you're in a, a winning trade and you just need to close it out. And if you closed it, you would have won. You could have walked away, enjoyed your day. But what happened is you have emotion and you think, hey, this might go a little higher or I might make a little more. And then it turns around on you and you lose it. So that type of stuff happens all the time. And I just want to avoid that. That's why I'm an algo trader and I, I just code all my algorithms in order to trade for me. So let's just dive into this. This might take a bit. So please do stick around. This is gonna, I'm going to show you a lot. And like I said, I'm just a normal, normal dude. And I want to show you that this is not like rocket science. So let's make all our imports here. Let's import CCXT, which is the library I'll be using. Um, let's import NumPy. Let's import my don't share config as DS. This is pretty much a configuration file with my keys in it. Let's go ahead and import um, date time for sure. Let's import date. And I'm doing this live, so uh, I don't see many people do this on YouTube. But if you appreciate it, this transparency, just 
go ahead and smash that like button okay so I imported all of these things it looks like I need to go ahead and pip install some of these pip install date Let's see if that works nope pip install date time and you're gonna see like everything <laughs> you can see like I'm gonna run into errors and stuff and let's go ahead I'll have to Google stuff along the way of course let's go ahead and I'll handle that later if I need it I'm just gonna mark them out for now import date let's go ahead and keep it moving import time and schedule okay now we need to connect to our uh, our brokerages so how are we gonna do that I'm gonna type in Phoenix equals CCXT CCXT dot Phoenix and then get some curly brackets and let's do enable rate limit and that will be true okay and then API key let's go ahead and you know here yours might look like that but I'm actually calling it in from this file that I call DS and let's find the key here and then the secret so CCXT is pretty cool because it connects to all exchanges, all crypto exchanges pretty much. Is pretty much. So Coinbase, Binance, Femex, FTX, all that. So let's go ahead and I'm going to mark to what was going on here from date time. I always do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that we're connected. So I'm going to print out Femex dot fetch balance and let's run this let's see if it is connected I do have a balance of like a hundred bucks or something and that's plenty 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 for this algorithm because I can lever up you know I can lever up 20 times um, maybe won't do that much but we are connected okay so the symbol I'm gonna use for now equals let's just let's build it with BTC because that will be easier okay and let's put position size position size let's just do one for now I will change that later params I this is if you've seen my other videos I, I show a lot of like step by steps and this is a parameter that I use for all of my algo trading within Femex because what it does is it makes it so I I only do limit orders it's a post only order so um, super handy to have all of that now we want to go ahead and figure out the indicators right so first step uh, find daily SMA I think I'm gonna do 20 let's do daily SMA 20 and then I want to find daily SMA or not daily 15 minute 15 minute SMA 20 okay so I need to make sure I get both of these SMAs in here and then I also need to get the bid and ask get bid and ask because it's just a it's a better it's more accurate pricing from what I've seen um, let's see what else should we get here let's start there and then we'll we'll just build this over time like I said I'm building this whole thing in front of you because I want to show you that like I'm you don't have to be a mad genius to be an algo trader you just have to be like persistent like it took a few months to learn how to code sure it, sure it was kind of boring at times but if if you can double your profits because you get rid of your emotion it's so worth it oh my goodness so worth it you spend so much time looking at the screen anyways um, okay so I don't like making decisions so that's why I'm coding this so let's just jump back into it let's go ahead and find the SMA um, let's call this daily SMA okay
and then what we want to do is we want to say day, let's say df I'm gonna do DFD so I'm gonna make a pandas data frame and by the way if you have any questions along the way about any of this just let me know let me know in the section below super easy for me to answer them for you I actually like to say something like print starting indies so indicators and just thinking here and I apologize I'm gonna there's gonna be some pauses throughout this right because I'm I literally have to think this through and this is the process of coding uh, an algorithm so I'm just getting th things set up I'm good everything's imported we're looking good I got a data frame here and I need to pull in data obviously is one of the first things I need to do. So let's go ahead and let's get the bars. Bars equal Phoenix. We got to get our data. I think that's a good place to start. And this is why I love coding is because like, especially algos, because you're just like sitting here trying to figure things out and it's like a puzzle right so let's say time frame equals time frame i haven't set that variable i need to set that and then limit of bars this is how many bars we want equals num of bars okay i need to set both of these so this will be the time frame so equals one day sorry it's one day okay and number of bars give us as many as you can no actually i don't need that many i just need a hundred okay let's do a hundred okay so starting indies i made a data frame i don't know if i'm gonna use it i should use it though and now i should bring this data frame down here because i want to put these bars here and just to kind of show my work, let's go ahead and just not even show my work. I just want to see if this works. Let's print bars, see if this works. I should have now the, um, I should have the open, high, low, and close. Open, high, low, and close. And the volume for the last 100 days on the daily. So remember, we're building the daily SMA right here. So starting indies okay perfect mm. okay so looks like it's on a list this would be the date timestamp this would be the open this is the high low close volume perfect okay so I, I have all the data now I need to change this data up because it looked like it was on a list let's go ahead and Pause that out. And then let's go ahead and make this data frame. Just have our data be a little nicer. Columns equal um, timestamp. Okay. Let's do open high low. And I got to remember to. Uh, Remember that I'm using lowercases. Sometimes some data sources will use uppercase, some will use lowercase, and I'm a lowercase guy. It's just easier to remember for me. But okay, so now I have this data frame, and let's print this out. See what this looks like. See if we have a better, better looking set of data now. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so now we have the timestamp, the open, the high, the low, the close, and the volume. I don't know what date this is though, so I need to change that. Okay, so how do you change that? Let's see here. 
let's call this df let's tap into it tap tap in the timestamp and then let's change it by doing pd dot to date time and then dfd um we would tap in the timestamp again and then oh we would just change the unit unit is we would say it's the, okay so essentially what we're doing with this line is saying hey the date times in milliseconds timestamp let's uh change it to date time so this should look better now let's go ahead and move this print here to uh here let's see what this looks like now beautiful 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 okay so i have until 122 Today is 5-7, oh, no, today's 5-8. So this is yesterday's data, up to yesterday's data. Um, will that work? Let me think, I think that's fine. Do I need today's data on the daily? Let's check this out. I wanna see what it's gonna look like with the 15 minute, because I do need, <laughs> I do need the last 15 minutes for the next one, okay. This works, 7.15, 17.15, I think right now is 17.30ish. Okay, this works, this works, this works. Okay, so I was just checking to see if the if we had the right data coming in from Femex. I know Femex is sometimes playing with their data, to be, to be honest. Um, I love the exchange though, it's, it's nice. Um, let's see. Okay, what do we do now? We have the data frame, we have the information we need. Um, okay, there's some things that I really enjoy using, but I wanna figure out how should we do this? Like I wanna get the low, the high, and all that good information, but since it's in the function, I need to think this through. Okay, so we have the daily, we don't have the daily SMA yet though. So let's just get the daily SMA. Daily. SMA and I'm gonna put this data frame again here and I have a sip of my coffee and let's find the SMA so I think we need to do something with like rolling closes yeah that's right so daily SMA and we're gonna do a 20 20 day why did I pick 20 day I don't know to be honest, you could use the 15 day, the 10 day, whatever you want. But that's the thing with algo trading is a bunch of parameters and you got to test things out. I could back test this and I probably will. Uh, maybe I'll make another video back testing this strategy as well. Usually I like to back test before I run live, but at the same time, I sometimes just run live. You know, I'm not using a, a crazy amount of money, hundred bucks. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die if I lose a hundred bucks. So let's go ahead and say DFD. Let's add to the data frame, the SMA, uh, SMA 20. Uh, and we have to call it daily. So SMA 20 day. Okay. That makes sense, right? SMA 20 day. So I'm adding to the, to the data frame and I'm going to say DF. Mm, DFD, I need to tap in the DFD and then I need to find the close and then I need to make the average of the close. So rolling mm, and then I think it's 20 dot mean, not means. And then we should be good. So now we should have a column here that has the 20 day SMA. And I think this is a really good example of like one line of code to find the 20 SMA. Before I started coding, like this seemed like something hard, right? <laughs> it's one line. It's crazy. Let's see if it works though. Okay, so these have nons, NANs, because there wasn't 20 days of data before. I might need to get rid of these, and that's fine because yeah that's fine because this data goes back far enough and i'm only going to look at the 20 day sma 
So I'm just gonna drop those. And I kind of remember how to do that. I think it was drop an A, PD dot drop an A. Mm. Google this real quickly. <laughs> I always joke that like coding is just being a professional Googler. That's all. That's all it is. Jeez Louise, that couldn't have been easier. Drop nah. Drop nah. I was right. Boom. Let's see what it does now. Do I have pandas installed? That's the question. Pandas has no attribute called drop nah. I got pandas. D I I I I always do that. I would put P D, but it's actually you have to call the the uh, the pan the the data frame. Okay, so let's go ahead and print that. By the end of this, we're gonna have an algo working. I, like it's gonna work. So am I going crazy? Yeah, I am going crazy. Drop underscore nah. Who who? <laughs> Stop it. Who are you? What are you thinking? Okay, sweet. It didn't drop now. This is coding. This is welcome to. Welcome to the show. Fish frame dot drop non. Hmm. Maybe I need to put the, uh, All right, whatever, this isn't too important. I'll get back to that. Um, let's go ahead and, so let's run this again. Make sure that we have the SMAs in there. Sorry, I'm really into data science as well and machine learning. So this type of stuff just kind of annoys me. I feel like, you know, with machine learning, you always want to get rid of, rid of the NANs, the NANs. I really like Indian NAN too, but that's not the point. But there's just no point right now for me to get rid of the NAN. So I'm not going to do that. Um, sorry for getting into that. But that's what coding is. You go down freaking rabbit holes. So I have the SMA 20. I think I want to go ahead and put another SMA in there just in case. Let's do, uh, let's do a couple more. SMA. No, nah, no. Nah, I'm going down another rabbit hole. Let's not do that. Let's go ahead and make the 15 minute SMA. Because remember. We're gonna be buying around the 15 minute SMA. So let's just copy this and let's call this uh, daily SMA. Let's call this uh, 15. F15, sounds good to me. Starting 15 minute SMA, let's change this to 15 minutes. And then how many, what is, how many hours is that? Okay, that's a lot, it's a lot of data. 15 minutes, 100 bars, 15 minutes, should be fine. Bars, that's fine. DF. DFF, let's do that, DFF. So we're essentially just using the same, same code, but we're changing things up because remember, now we're getting the 15 minute SMA. DFF, okay, does that look good to, to you? It looks, okay, we're getting the data. We're formatting the data. We're changing the timestamp. 
and we're creating the 20 SMA, but let's call it 15. And it would take DFF.close and find the rolling 20 minutes. Sorry, 20 bars. So essentially, this is going to find the last. Yeah, this should be good. I'll explain it here in just a second. Let's do F15 SMA. And then let's run it, see what happens. Okay, so sweet, sweet, sweet. We have the 15 minutes. You can see it's every 15 minutes. Have the data, the open, the high, the low, the close, the volume. And then, wow, it's a big volume spike. What happened? I need to write that down. We got to make some sort of bot based off the volume. I've been wanting to make a capitulation bot. I like using volume a lot because I think it's a really good indicator, you know, how many people are buying and selling. <laughs> I feel like that's a really good indicator. Um, okay, so we have all this data now. We've got the SMA 20, 15 minute, and we've got the other one as well, the daily. And remember, the strategy here is, let's go ahead and put this here. Strategies to buy. Let's just refresh our memories here. Strat. Determine the, um, the trend with 20 day SMA. Then based off trend buy or sell to open, AKA short or long, around the 15 minute SMA, 20 day. So pretty simple strategy, but it's pretty awesome that you can automate this, right? So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So, we're good to go. I'm just thinking a little bit, what should the next steps be? So we found the 20 SMA, the daily. That's awesome. And we found the 15 minute SMA, which is awesome. It's awesome, awesome. And let's go ahead, let's return this DF. DF, F, I wanna combine, combine these DFs now. Do I wanna do that? Yeah, I think that would be useful, just in case. DFD, and then we'll call this DFD equals that, and then DFF equals that. Okay, so now we have both of the functions, and what I wanna do is combine these two. The reason being is because it'll be nice to work with. Combine the two data frames. Okay, so let's just make sure everything's working. DFD and print comma DFF. Okay, let's run this. Make sure both of the data frames are out here. What's up with this though? Why is that? SMA 20, SMA 20. Hmm. I think I should not print them here. Let's run that back, just make sure everything's set up correctly. weird thing happened here the SMA 20 jumped over here and I don't know why hmm 
is it my screen maybe just shift it over interesting I think it's just an error with the uh, the shifting on the output but oh it's because I did this stupid comma thing yeah that's why okay let's try this again Now let's run it. Let's see if this looks nice. Okay, perfect. So, timestamp. I wonder why this timestamp has a minute. Oh, it's because it's the 15 minute. That's why it's wider. Okay, got it, got it, got it. I actually don't want to combine those. I forgot you don't want to combine those because one's on the 15 minute interval and one's on the daily. I'm sure you already caught that, to be honest. But, you know, I'm making a video as well, so <laughs> I'm kind of multitasking. Um, let's see here. Next thing we want to do. Let's look at the strategy. We're determining the trend with the 20-day SMA. So let's determine the trend. I think the way to determine the trend is if bid is under the 20 day SMA, then it's equals bearish. If bid is over, sorry, we shouldn't do bid. We should do, no, let's do bid. I like bid. So that's the reason I like to bring the bid and ask in is because it's a more real price. It's like what's happening right now. You know, not 15 minutes ago. What's happening right now? If bid is bigger than 20 day SMA, then um, it goes bullish. I think I'll just go ahead and build that into this function here. Okay. I need to build a function here to get the bid, bid and ask. Def bid. All right, ask bid, bid ask, ask bid. I know that's weird to do ask then bid, but for some reason I outputted the ask first when I first got starting, got started, and now I have to stick with it or else I'll forget. Okay, so return the ask and the bid. And to get the bid and ask, it's pretty easy. I think we just do femix dot, um, Fetch, fetch uh, order book. And then symbol, which is BTC. And then let's print order book, print OB. I gotta make that variable real quick. Okay, so this should print order book mark this out and I just have to figure out what the order back book looks like let's do pretty print no I'm not gonna do that let's run this real quickly I'm gonna mark all of this stuff out for now I don't want anything else printed just want the bid in the ask and what I'm trying to do I'm, I, I'm getting the order book right here um, and then I need to tap into this so to tap it this is a dictionary and it looks like the bids are right here so I would type in bids let's keep this up here just so I can see it so these are the, the most recent bids three four four seven nine and that's the number I need so where am I? Up here, okay. Let's say bid equals, and that would be order book. And then I think I'd said bids, right? Yeah, bids. And then it would be inside here. I think that's zero, zero. 
if I remember correctly. And then the ass would be ass right here. And then change this to ask. Ask Jeeves. Let's go ahead and do that. And let's mark this out. Let's see if this works. It should return like a tuple of my two things. Ask and bid. So ask should be first, bid should be second. Let's see if it works. Okay, there we go. So this is the ask, this is the bid. Perfect. Okay, so what I like to do sometimes is just note to self here. Um, zero equals ask and one equals equals bid. And then I can put it up here. And then I can just get rid of that. Not get rid of it. I didn't get rid of it. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. It's just making this a little more beautiful. Okay, so now we have bid ask. And why do we need the bid ask? If bid, okay, so we need to pull in bid. Bid equals, what's it equal? Ask bid one. Okay. And then, so if bid is under, let's make a little if statement. If bid is under the SMA, I wonder if you can compare these two. Mm, I don't know if you can, but we'll see. I always trip up right here. Um, if bid is under DF SMA 20, print bearish. else print bullish okay I'm just doing this because I don't know if this is gonna work because the bid is this is a pandas data frame it's always a little tricky but we'll figure it out together don't worry don't worry when you're working with pandas it's always kind of uh, different let's go ahead and print uh, I can just run that yep that's right so the truth value of a series is ambiguous Okay, I know how to do this. I just need to think a little bit. So I'm thinking if it's worth it to do it this way or if we should just use the close. The reason I don't really want to use the close though is because it's yesterday's close and things can change pretty quickly. So like, for example, if there's a huge green bar or something, we could pop into a bullish trend so I kind of don't want to do that. Mm. Just trying to think. The error essentially is you can't compare this. You can't compare like a number to um, a series. Because this is actually like a data frame full of numbers. And there's a pretty easy way to fix that. Just kind of racking my brain. One way I could do it is, no, I'm not gonna do it that way. I 
done this so many times that it's funny that I, I don't have the answer right here for me. Okay, so I think we're going to try this. Okay, so df dot d dot load df d and essentially I just need to compare within the bid mm, let's do 20 day SMA okay if that is bigger than the bid then we would do sig, which is for signal, equals if the SMA is bigger than the bid, it's bearish. So let's do that. Okay. See if this works. I don't know if it's going to work. Okay, perfect. It does. Ooh. Pandas is always a little tricky to play with. Um, so it says sell, sell, sell. And I just want to make sure that's correct. So the bid would be about 35 34523 and the SMA is holy smokes yeah sell 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 let's just double check this works by flipping this I always like to double check because this is like a pretty important part of the code right we want this is figuring out the trend so non oh it's because I didn't do anything okay That's why. Okay, so I have to set up two of these actually. This is why we double check. And then let's do this. And let's call this buy. So just to make sure this is clear, this is like we're tapping in the DF, SMA20. If it's if the SMA20 is smaller than the current bid, this is a bid right now, then the signal column is gonna say buy. Sell, sell, sell. Okay, okay. And I'm just trying to think how can we double check to make sure this is correct? Um, oh, I know how. What if we change the bid to 60,000? So now the bid is 60,000. That should be higher than the SMA. So it should say buy. If this code works correctly, this should say buy. Or the last few rows. Okay, perfect. I think it's working. So let me run this one more time and just kind of talk you through it, just in case you're you're interested. <laughs> kind of talking to myself at this point, but um, essentially we pull in all the data, and then if the current bid here. It's actually not on here, but we got the bid from the bid and ask, the actual bid and ask. If that bid is smaller than this SMA, then we should be selling. We should open as a sell. We should open as a sell. So I'm just going to write some notes here for myself. If SMA is bigger than bid equals sell. If SMA is smaller than bid equals buy. Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, I think we're really making progress here. This is awesome. 
I think we're good on this this function, right? Because we're just trying to find the trend. And we do find that trend. It's going to tell us buy or sell. And this is why I love, 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 love algo trading. Because you don't have to think. After you code it, it's just like it is what it is. Computers are going to do it uh, this way. You don't have to like be like, oh my God, it's going to go higher. It's going to go lower. <laughs> oh, because we all know how that works out. So, um, all right. So I think we're good to go here. So let's just mark this out for now. We don't need it. Might need it later. Let's go back to our strategy. Strat is to determine the trend with 20 day SMA. Done. Buy and sell to open around the 15 minute SMA. Let's do um, 0.1, no. Yeah, 0.1% under and 0.3% over why did I pick those numbers well I'm kind of guessing but that being said that is like you know when I hand trade this is kind of like a strategy that I would try to follow I would see oh, okay well we're in a trend let me see what the trend is and then let's buy or sell around the SMAs you know I think a lot of people follow strategies similar to this so this this could be alright but the cool thing about algo trading is like if you find an all right strategy, guess what? Tomorrow you have another day and you can make that all right strategy better. And then the next day, guess what? As long as you're healthy, you wake up, you have another day and you make that better and better and better. So the, the key is to just get the strategies out there, right? Like every single day. That's why you see me here. My YouTube channel is literally me making strategies every day because you know, I've got a goal in my mind and I'm going to get there. I'm just going to keep swimming until I get there. And if I can share this with you, that's amazing. Because you're going to change your trading forever, right? Like, it, I'm not saying you're going to have, I'm not guaranteeing profits or any of that stuff. But I am guaranteeing that code can execute your trades for you if you know how to code. And then it's on you on making the strategy. Like I'm gonna help you as much as possible by creating these strategies on, on YouTube. And of course, have boot camps and whatnot that will really accelerate your learning, but I'm here to help and I'm here to build, you know? So let's go ahead and build out the buying part. So buy. So we have the bid and ask, we have the SMAs, we would be buying. Oh, let's put a buy price. Um, we need to figure out if it's a figure out if buy or sell to open. Set buy or sell to open price in DF. Those are the two things we're going to do right now. So figure out if it's a buy or sell to open. We know that. We just have to pull this guy. How do you pull it? You just pull this over here. We're going to pull this data frame into this data frame. We're going to data frames inside of data frames. DF D equals that. Okay, so we have that data frame. And then to get the last, we want the last entry of that data frame. So DFD, D, and we want the last entry of the, what's it, what do I call it? The signal. Sig, negative one, this should get us the last one. Let's just see if we can get it. Print. Holy moly, what am I doing? I just want to run this to make sure that we can print it. Let's just go ahead and save really quickly. It's always a good practice, you know? D 
56. Okay, so, so, so. Let's try this. Let's call this sig. And then let's print sig negative one. Let's see if that works. Hmm. Well, you know what? It's a good thing we got Google, cause I do this all the time. Do you have the eye lot? I could use a location if I wanted to. But I kind of want to just pull pull one value out of data frame. Zero would do the zero. Negative one. A. Okay, I think I got it. Just use the location and try to get the last one. So let me just write this down. Okay, so sig equals df.d.iloc slash negative one. Okay, and then let's see if this prints it out. I hope so. Hey, there it is. So, okay. Um, I think that should be that should be cool. Cause we're getting the last okay, last signal. Uh, yeah, the last signal. It prints the last signal. Okay. So we figured out if it's a buy or sell. And then let's say if sig equals cell print we should be opening as a cell else it's just uh, hopefully only thing else I can think of we should be opening as a Bye. Okay, I want to get rid of some print statements because there's a lot, a lot, a lot. See where else we're having printies at. That's a good one. I like it. This one I don't want. No more. No more, por favor. Let's run it. See what happens. We should be opening it as a cell. Perfect. Okay. So now it knows. It's looking at the data and says to me we should be opening as a cell. a variable here let's make open as by equals false do I need that though 
where am I doing this? I'm doing it inside of this 15 minute thing. I don't know if that's the right decision. <laughs> Put it in this function. Because what are we trying to do here? Set buy or sell price. Okay, that's what we're trying to do. Don't, need if I, no, don't know if I need all of this, but so if this is true at least. So essentially it's gonna say it's open as buy as a false or open as buy as a true. If it says sell, it's gonna be false. Else it's gonna be true. So DF Do I need the open price? Yes, I do. Set buy or sell to open price in DF. Oh, I can so I can do it here. Got it. So I'm just gonna set the data frame DF dot I think it was what F. Um, sig equals buy no so I don't know if that's gonna work to be honest but no that's not gonna work again I'm running into that stupid pandas thing Where you can't compare things in pandas. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this over and use this as my comparer instead of an if statement. So pandas can't really do if statements in some ways because it makes sense, but essentially it, it, pandas can't do data for, uh, compare comparing because it's a series of data, not just like one piece. It's like I'm trying to compare uh, blah, 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 one thing to multiple things. So let's just get rid of that. Now I'm going to keep it for now. Okay, so now we want df.location if We should put sig here. If sig df changes to f. Ah, I have a better way to do this. So essentially what I'm trying to to do is figure out if it should be buy or sell to open, right? So df.dailysmy sma sig equals the last sig. But I actually don't need to do this part. So what I'm going to do instead is We'll make a buy price and sell price. Then later figure out which I should choose. So buy price one and sell price two uh, and two. So because we want to, I want to be able to, you know, I'm sure my entry is not going to be perfect. So I want to put in two. So let's say, D, let's make a bunch of data frames here. And I'm gonna call this uh, buy price. Buy price one. And buy price two. And sell price one. And sell price two. Okay, so we're good to go here. Essentially, I'm making four new columns, buy prices, sell prices. And what did we say? We wanted like 0.3 or something, 0.1. Just copy this over. And 
this is what we're going to be doing here. Buy and sell to open around the 15 minute. So this would be buy price one would be the 15 minute SMA. One person point one percent under point one percent under and point three percent over. Okay. So what is the SMA? Well it's up here. Fifteen minute SMA. Dot value, I believe. Times 1.001 Got to mark all this out. Let's print this DF. Okay. Let's see if this works. Perfect. Buy price one would be the SMA times 1.001. It looks about right. Okay, perfect, perfect. And that's actually not right because we want it 1% under. So it'd be 0.999. And then let's go ahead and copy this over and buy price two would be over bigger than 1.003. Remember I said 0.3%, so move that over 0.3. This would be 0.1 under 0.1. Perfect. And then I think that works, right? Do I even need the other two? Let's just print it out and see what happens. Sheesh, it's getting big. So this would be SMA 15. And this would be the buy price one, it'd be right under the SMA 15. And this would be right over the SMA 15. But, 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 that's why we need four columns. Okay, I got it. So this would be 0.1% under the SMA, buy one. And this would be. 0.3% over the SMA. But remember this. Let's pretend the SMA is right here. 0.1 under will be right here, and 0.3 over will be right here. So that's good for the buys, but no, I'm sure you go for the sales because we'd be shorting here at the first one and then shorting here at the second one since this is selling. But then if it were going down here and the SMA were down below, buy 0.1 and then under 0.3. Okay, so that's why. So the buy price, they're going to be inverse. So this needs to be 1.001. And this needs to be 
0.997. And essentially, this, the sell prices need to be the inverse of that because we always want to sell higher. So what I'm trying to get at here is like, if the SMA was down here, we'd want our 0.1 above to buy right here and then our 0.3 below be under it because that's a better buy. So it's like falling into it. Boom, fill, fill. But if it's up here, we want the 0.1 to be below, so that'd be 0.999, and then the second buy would be over 0.103. So 0.999 and equals, equals 1.003. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm glad I caught that. Um, that would have been not terrible, but it would have been weird. We would just wouldn't have got as good of entries. So that's the, I mean, that's one thing about algo trading though, is like, you gotta make sure you're, you're right. <laughs> oh, you gotta be correct. It's fun though, because it's, I'd rather be correct or wrong. I'd rather be wrong through code than like emotionally, like looking at the chart all day and stuff. It's terrible. Um, okay, so three, four, okay. The, let's say the open, three, four, okay. This looks fine to me. Um, all right, so cool, cool. We've made some progress here. Let's go ahead and delete all of this junk. I don't even know what I did there, but bye. Okay. So we have a strategy now. We need to figure out the exit too. The entry. Exit. I'm not gonna build a stop loss, like I said. Like, I'm just gonna YOLO it, it's $100. We'll see what happens. Let me know in the comment section below if you're enjoying this, if you have any questions, if you wanna see the results later, let me know, comment below. But um, yeah, this is fun. We're making progress here. I think we're about done too. So let's just um, let's print both our DFs to check in on them see if they're still doing all right <laughs> like they've changed literally why i code that because things don't change okay there's a lot going on here now bp this is the one we need tells us sell boom boom and then we would make okay if we're selling we would make the first bid here at 2428 and then the second bid would be a bit higher so buy one, buy two. Okay, let's go ahead and make the buys, I think. Entry and exit. Okay, I think, I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and say def, bot, Call this bot, body bot. Okay. Let's bring in all this information that we need. So this one, the F SMA. Oh, I already have that actually. It's all there. And then bid ask, bid, oops, sorry. Ask equals Ask bid one, zero, and bid equals ask bid one. Okay, let's just pull all this information in here to our bot. Okay, so we get the daily SMA, determines long, short. 15 minute SMA provides prices. And what did I call them? BP and SP.
Okay, so bid and ask, those are self-explanatory. Let's make our entry. Make this screen a little smaller again. Hmm, and to enter this, how do we want to play this? Of course, we already set our params up. So we're good to go there. We've got the buy prices, we've got the long short. So inside the bot, we need to figure out first, okay, make open order, long or short. So to see long or short, it'd be DF, D, I just did this, so I'm just going to grab it from up here. I'm going to tap into that DF, DF.load, not that one. It was the one I did negative one, remember? Whoa, 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 whoa. DF, what was it? DF dot log, I think. Of the um, sig negative one. Do you have the I look zero? Eh. I just want to just wrote that. Anyways, I must have deleted it in that whole rage quit. That's why you don't rage quit. That's why you don't just delete things. But say print sig just to make sure. And then let's run the bot. Let's run the bot. Did ask oh, 92 made a silly mistake though what again sheesh 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 fool me once fool me twice fool me thrice let's see Okay, so I got the cell. Perfect. And we'll call that, where are we at? Where are we at? Sig. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of that. Let's go ahead if sig equals by print. a buy okay else make it an opening order as a sell let's run it one more time let's just make sure like I said I like to be double triple quadruple checking things because this is real money on the line <laughs> uh, making an opening order as a sell perfect 
Now let's make the orders. Oh, actually, I need to get the order prices. Mm. DF. DFF. Dot I lock. Negative one. Um, price. What was that name? BP. Yeah, BP one. BP one. That's not how I spelt it though. BP one equals, and then BP two equals that same thing but a little different. So I'm going into the data frame, getting the last one. Now I'm getting buy price two. Now let's do the same thing for sell price. Change to S's. Things like this just make me fall in love over and over again with coding because it just changing letters is so much better than looking at charts. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, so print F. This is BP one. This is BP two. Little F literal action here. BP two. BP one. Perfect. Change the letters again. Okay, perfect, perfect. Mm, let's just run it. Okay, making an opening order is sell. This is sell price one. So three, four, two, eight, one, and three, four. Four one eight. Let's go over to my exchange, 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 and see what's going on here. Uh, this is just such a great example of like why I'm an algo trader because I would just try to short this right here, but in reality, I don't know. I don't know. I think my algo would too, but I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't be able to exit by it with my mind though. So. A current price is three four five two eight. Three four five two eight. And the SMA is three four. The sell price one is three four two eight one. Three four four one eight. So we must just be over the 15 minute SMA right now. Hmm. Let's put the SMA on here. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. That was a lot. I just want a simple SMA. Simple moving average community scripts, favorite scripts, technicals, indicators. So, what I'm thinking is happening right now is just this is a smoothened moving average. I think we're just over the SMA. So let's get rid of this one. And let's make this, what did I say? What were we doing at 20? 20 SMA. Style, let's make it a little darker, a little bigger. A little, there we go. Okay. 
So let's change this to 15 minutes. Okay, that's, that's the thing. So this looks a little weird because we're over the SMA. Now, the thing that I said at the very start though, won't let us submit this order, which is awesome. Because I did post only orders. I've got another video about that, but essentially it allows you to say, hey, if this isn't gonna work as a limit order, just cancel it. Speaking of that, I'm gonna go ahead and put a time sleep Time dot sleep. I'm gonna put um, 10 minutes. No, let's do five minutes. Because if the the orders do get submitted and canceled because the SMA is higher, well, I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to just keep sending orders in. Okay, so we're good to go, we're good to go, we're good to go. We're back on track. So we need a buy. If signal equals buy, print making buy order, BP1. I gotta figure out the size. I already put size of one at the very top, but let's see how much I can buy. I'm gonna, I have leverage on here. Let's. 25x YOLO, that's crazy, but whatever. BTC USD margin, okay. Let's say 10. How much does that cost? $14? Okay, let's do 50 then. Yeah, 50 contracts will be good. So let's change our size to 50 and that's position size is 50, but I'm gonna have an open size too. Why? Watch. Equals. You know, it could be more sophisticated than that, but I'm essentially taking my position size, which is 50, and making open size half of that. So I can do two orders because I have buy order one, buy order two. So let's make these buy orders. Um, I want to make sure to do this correctly. I don't. I'm not going to use a stop a stop loss like I said, but I am going to only do limit orders. That's for sure. So, Femex, Femex dot create limit buy order, and then we need to pass in the symbol. We need to pass in. Mm, open size. We need to pass in the bid. So BP1. And then the params. So this is what I was talking about. So in this example right now, like how the market currently is, we're above the SMA. But I believe on the daily. So remember, our the way our bot works is it sees where we're at. And if we're under this yellow line right here, we're in a bear trend and we're only selling to open. But then it's coming over here and saying, hey, the f where are we gonna open this at? Well, we're gonna do the around the 15 minute. We're gonna do 0.1 under and 0.3 over. But in this situation, we just popped through this. So it's gonna send the orders, but they're gonna get canceled right away because I only accept limit orders if you go ahead and we look at this params here, this is what I set up at the start. Params times time and force means post only. AKA, if this doesn't work as a limit order, do not accept my order. Pretty much never, ever, ever, please, ever, ever, never let me be a market order. So we're doing two orders, so let's do this. Boom, boom, boom. And BP2 will be the second one. And then we want to do the same thing for the cell orders. Now I got to make sure to do this one, right? Because this S, open size, symbol, symbol, I got to make sure to make it sell. I have done that before where it's like I copy, like it's sometimes good to copy, but sometimes bad. So this is the sell price, create order, blah, blah, blah. Then we'd sleep 300 seconds. And I believe 300 seconds is five minutes. 
think we're good. I think we are good to go. I'm going to pause these sleeps here because just for example purposes while we're testing. This shouldn't fill any orders because they're pretty out there. What else do we need to do? You know, normally, not normally actually, I don't always use a stop loss because I use my position size as my stop loss and like just, hey, if it, if it works, it works, but if it doesn't, it doesn't. And then just make sure to control your push position size. That's how I control my risk a lot of the time. Uh, some, some of my strategies though, definitely, 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 definitely use a stop loss. Um, the one thing I think we're missing here is the exit. So we got to do that. Um, I kind of want to test this out though. Let's just run it. What's the worst that could happen? I buy a hundred dollars worth. See if it makes the orders. Okay, perfect. You can see it made the orders, but cancel them immediately because of the post only. That's awesome. Once this drops down, it will try to make the orders again. You know, we'll, we'll loop that here at the end just so it keeps running. But perfect, perfect. Okay, so I need to make an exit. Def exit. And I think what I'm going to do with this is make an exit based on my target percentage. So let's go ahead and make a target. And I'm going to do uh, 20%. Nah, no, I'm risking a lot here because I'm going, I'm not having a stop loss. So I need to think this through. I'm gonna do 30%. So it's a little higher, but since I'm using leverage, it's only really like a 1% move. Mm, I think I wanna do 25%. Okay, so it'll take me out of the market 25%. And I don't wanna just put a, I guess I could just put a, a take profit. Hmm. I could just set up a take profit on the buy orders. But I actually like this way better. So I'm going to set up a function. And then in that function, I'm going to say, hey, if we hit my target. If we hit target. Then close. So how do we do this? We have to tap in. Now this is gonna be a little tricky because we have to tap into a bunch of dictionaries, but I think this is the last thing. Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure this is the last thing. So let's see how we're gonna pull this off. Let me think about this for a second. So I think I'm going to make this, mm, it's pretty much going to look into my current positions and yeah. Okay. So it's going to look into my current positions and it will run every time the bot runs, right? So. I think that makes sense. Yeah. 
Yeah, so essentially we're going to have it check this every time. So exit. We're going to run this. Check in to see. I got to be able to type. Print. Checking to see if it's time to exit. Okay. So that looks good to me. I'm just trying to figure out how I go about this because this is going to be a fairly big function, but it's not going to be crazy big. That being said, I just got to make sure to do it right. <sighs> okay. I'm going to call this PL close. PL close. Just because that's a little more descriptive for me. And now I can know, hey, checking if we hit our PL. Okay. Now, the first thing we want to do is set up some params. Params equal type this is because I'm using Femix I gotta like do some weird stuff with with the codes of exactly how the um, how to tap into my open positions so it's gonna look something like that it should be a dictionary though okay and then we want to say position dictionary. Position dictionary equals femix dot fetch. Fetch positions. And then pass in the params. So these params are because I'm using the contract. Um, things are a little different. So I need to print this out now because now I need to figure out how to get into that, get into the dictionary and then figure out like what my position size is. Um, I need to put a position on in order to figure this out. So let's see here, let's just mark it. Let's, uh, I'm gonna short it. Okay, perfect, perfect. Just lost a little bit of money. See how that goes for me. Um, let's do P and L close and let's throw that here. And now I'm looking for a dictionary. Okay, there it is. That's the one. What just happened? Oh, it's <laughs> shoot. I gotta be careful about that. It just ran the bot. Um, but luckily it just canceled the orders. That reminds me, actually, I need to do something else too. I need to cancel the orders. Okay, so I got that. Let's do a rando.json. Let's throw that in there. Let's format it. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. SMA bot, um, create, limit buy orders. I need to cancel all orders before I make these or else it's just gonna keep making more and more or orders. Thank God I remembered. Phoenix.cancel all orders um, of the symbol. Oh, that's another thing. Only run if not in position. Okay. If in position equals false, run this. 
Hey, I almost forgot that part. Almost forgot that part, and that would have been bad. Because what happened, or what would have happened if I didn't just put in position, what would have happened is I would have just kept buying over and over and over again. So we need to make sure to get in position somewhere. Let's return it from here. Mm. Okay, so two things I'm doing now. I got the position dictionary. I need to figure out how to figure out if um, I need to dive in here and figure out what my PL is. So I have to figure out like what leverage I'm using um, and the size. Okay, so checking to see if time to exit. So it looks like BTC is zero, so zero dictionary. And then I would need, let's set that up first actually. Position dictionary. equals position dict at zero. Okay, so now we have that. And then we have to figure out what side of order it is. So I'm looking for something side. Okay, side, perfect. Side equals position dictionary of side. Now we should have the side and we gotta get the entry price entry price equals position dictionary position dictionary and then i need the price so the average entry price what should be average AVG something something something. Pretty much looking for the price because I need to figure out the average entry price EP average entry price. Okay, perfect. Grab that. Perfect, perfect. And I want to make that float actually. Perfect, perfect. Um, get the leverage leverage equals position dictionary and I believe this one's just called leverage okay I also want to make that float I guess it doesn't need me a float yeah actually no floats good floats good Okay, now what? I need the current price. Equals, um, how do I get the current price? I need the bid and ask. Where's bid and ask at? Uh, the bid here. This is how much somebody is willing to buy at, so I'll call that current price. Right? That makes sense. Because if somebody's willing to buy, bid, that means they're willing to buy, so that means that's the current price. In my opinion, at least. We'll see if that works out for us. Let's go ahead and print some stuff out and just see if this is working. Print F side. Uh, what else? Entry, price, just want to make sure I have all of this information before I move forward. Lev equals leverage. What else do I need? 
think we're good here. I'm gonna close this up. Um, close, or not close it, but let's see here. Hi, hi, hi. Let's just say in position is true for now. So it doesn't run. Okay, let's see what happens. What I'm looking for is that thing I just did. Average entry price, position dictionary, key area, key error? Why? I don't get that. Hmm. I just saw that there's average entry price right here. Average entry price. Where'd I go wrong here? Where did I go wrong? Maybe I'll just do entry price and see if that works. Run it back. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So the side is short. Leverage. Huh. I feel like I'm in a different dictionary because it should say sell. So the side should say sell, not short. Side equals sell. So, is there another side? Side equals short. Side equals sell. Side equals short. Hmm. So, what's going on here? I want to be in this, so maybe I need to tap into info. Position dictionary is zero. Info maybe? Whatever, that works. Um, we'll just do this then. We'll just do, uh, keep it at zero. And knowing that it's short or long. Okay. So now we need to figure out, because now we're trying to look at our P&L, right? We're trying to look at our P&L. So we need to figure out if the side, if side equals um, let's say long. I need to make sure that it says that word long. So I'm just gonna look at that. I made a little money. Mark it. Sell this. And then let's long it. And let's run this. I want to make sure that that word says long. We know the first word is it says short. Okay, perfect. It says long. 
Okay, so if side is long, then the difference will be the current price minus the entry price, right? Because if it's long, it's the difference is going to be a little different than the, if it's short, it's going to be the opposite, right? Difference equals entry price minus current price. Okay, so now we have the difference. I want to find the percentage, um, and I have to do this in a try block because it might not return. So percentage equals round. Um, let's round it. So we have to do that. And then we want to make another one and another one diff entry price. And then multiply that by the leverage. And I just want uh, 10 spaces. Okay, and then if that doesn't work, and the reason this won't work sometimes is because we won't have a, we won't have a position. So let's go ahead and say print F side, nope, I don't need that, diff, and then also the perk. So I want the difference and the percentage. Okay, so this, it shows, okay, there it is. Uh, the difference between our entry and the current price is negative 10. And this is our percentage. Actually, that's not, I mean, it's close to our percentage. We just have to make some, 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 some updates. So let's go ahead and say perk part equals 100 times perk because it was a decimal prior. And we can say print th this. This is our PL percentage and then we can double check it because you can never be too sure so this should give us our PL percentage let's go check what our PL percentage is we're negative 0.84 percent but let's hover over 0.1 or 1 percent 0.43%. Okay, this looks about right. Um, it's always just a little bit different because some is using mark price, some is using last price. It's 0.38 versus 0.43. That's really close. I did my own math here. That's another thing. So um, to be that close, it's great. Okay, so now we have the PL percentage. And remember, our target is 30% or 25%. Let's see, hmm. Mm, how would we do this? Okay, so if the percentage is bigger than zero, that means there's a percentage. We can all agree on that. <laughs> uh, okay, if percentage is bigger than zero, we gotta do some stuff. Print, we are in a winning position. And then if the percent, because we're making our exit here, right? So what I'm trying to do here is if a percent goes over our target size, then we, we kill the position because we won, right? Okay, so that makes sense to me. So if perk is bigger than the target, print um, smiles, starting the kill switch because we hit our target.
of sorry you can't see that target a little ff there perfect and then we want to go ahead and say PL close equals true. That will be useful later. And then we want to call our kill switch, which we haven't created yet. So let's create that. This kill switch is going to gracefully take us out. So essentially, instead of like market closing where you have to pay a bunch of fees, I like the limit close and uh, I'll build that here in a second. Okay, starting the kill switch. Let's go back down here, figure this all out. So if percentage is over target, print kill switch. Else, print we have not hit our target yet this is actually where I would put in a um, I don't want to do else do I I do want to do else this is also where I'd put in a stop loss but I'm not going to do it for this one I'm using the position size as my stop loss. So let's go ahead and put another else over here at the end of this, you know, print. We are not in position. Okay. How's this look? This looks good to me. I'm gonna put PL close up here to before we start this as false. I think it's default false actually, so I didn't need to do that, but that's fine. I'm getting thirsty. I should have brought some water over here, but I think we're almost finished. So I need to call that kill switch, print that. I think we're good on this part. Um just do some more print statements because I love them. Uh, just finish checking PNL close, just so we know, and then let's return PNL close. So essentially, this is going to go through. It's going to figure out all the information I need, right? It's like my position side, um, the price, the leverage. And then it's going to do a little math uh, based on if it's long, then the current price or the difference price difference would be the current price minus the entry price. Right? Because the entry price would be lower, the current price. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And then down here, it would try to round this percentage and do all this math to find the percentage and then multiply the percentage. Should put that here. Well, I don't need this anymore, actually. And then it, you know, multiplies percentage. This is our PNL. It sets PNL close to false, which it should do by by default. Um, if percentage is over zero, that means we're in position. Oh snap! I need it in position too. Yes equals true all right so in position is now true I'm gonna put in position as false here I don't know why I do this but just to like remind me I guess that we're using that in position is false and then if the percentage is over zero 
in position is true. But snap, if it's less than zero, it's in position is true too. Hmm. So I need to put a LF here. Perk is under zero because we might be in a losing position. Print. We we are in a losing position, but holding on. And then this would be in position equals true. Just like that, right? So it's false, and then it's true if it's above or under, and then else it stays false. So we don't need to change anything, and then we return PL close equals true. Not here though, because we don't want a PL close yet. We want the PL close to be false. If it's over zero, we are in a winning position. If perk is over target, then PL close is true. And we hit kill switch. And okay, we're, I think we're good to go. PL close. Let's do this so I can carry this. Uh, so zero is PL close. And one is in position, right? PL close. PL close. PL close. Okay, so let's take this on down. Before we make the kill switch, I think the kill switch is the last thing. So I'm, I'm getting pretty excited because we're really close. So if in position. in position equals ba 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 pnl close one okay i should set it to true or false i can delete this now and wait right yeah 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 i always forget these little guys so in position should be set to whatever our yes true or false. If it's true, it's just gonna what's it gonna do? It's gonna do nothing. Let's go ahead and it would still work without this, but print we are in position already, so not making new orders. Perfect, perfect. Let's get rid of some of these print statements. Pretty just want pretty much just want the text that I'm sending. I don't want the DFs. these two I don't want those pretty much and I think there might be another one print DF I just want the data that I write okay I think we're good to go hmm <laughs> so if I run this now it should say we're not making a position because it's not like we're not We are in position already, so not making new orders. Perfect, perfect. Looks like we're down 1.337%. We have a side of long, entry price, leverage 25. This is looking really good. I don't know why it repeats the data. Oh, it's because I called the function multiple times. I don't care about that right now. I just wanna get this working. To be honest, I'm very thirsty, so I gotta make this kill switch. I had that big cup of coffee, and you know when you have coffee and you don't have much water? I'm feeling that way. I should probably eat something too. 
but let's get this done i think I'm, I'm i'm almost done we just need to make the kill switch so how do we make the kill switch the kill switch is pretty much just a graceful close that's what i like to call it at least instead of like market closing because your uh, either your stop loss goes off or your target gets hit instead of doing that I like to just be graceful with it because Femix actually pays you to create limit orders. So you have to pay 0 .0, 0 0.075% if you use market orders, but you get paid 0.025% if you make um, limit orders. Okay. So first, we need to see if we have open positions. And I probably could just say that in here, in position equals true. Yeah, perfect. I'm gonna call this open position equals that and that. It should give a true or false. Perfect. And then long, uh, let's get a long true or false. Long equals true or false, but how would I do that? Do I need that? We'll see. I should pass some more information actually. Side. I should figure out the size as well. So this will be the size. Okay, contracts would be the size. And then we could say return this size as well. And then I wanna say if size is, if size is bigger than zero, um, what do I need here? No, I don't need that. In position would be true, but what am I looking for is the question. I'm looking to see if it's long or short. And I know I have that here. If side is long and long equals true. and long equals false. Pass it through long as well and see what happens. So size and long are now part of this. Size is three or two. Two is size and three is long to you. Okay, perfect, 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 perfect. So PL would be size, the long would be this three, and size would be this two. Let's just make sure we have everything. Print F. Um, open position 
long and size. Do you think we're going to get an error? Probably. Split a bunch of stars just so I see it. Kill switch. Um, Pinot close is not defined. 113. Mm hmm. Because it's below it. All right, I'm going to make another function really quickly, and it's going to be called open positions. So I'm just going to get a bunch of data that I need, and I'm just going to try to do this quickly. I do this one all the time. So uh, def open positions, and this is a good one to, to know how to do because you're going to use it all the time, or I use it all the time. Type swap code USD. OK, perfect. Uh, fee bow equals femix dot fetch balance params equal params. So I'm just going to get all that information that I need because uh, it's just giving me a hard time. So open positions. Equals fee bow. Um, I think it's info data positions. OK, so we got that. And let's print open positions. And see if we can get our open positions, because then we'll have all the information we need. It's going to give me an error because of that last thing, but that's fine. OK, I got open positions. Perfect. Now, what do we want to do with these open positions? I actually need that information because I need to format it and see where things are. I cannot remember. It's too many dictionaries for me. Let's go over here. Um, let's throw it in here. Let's do a little formatting here. Uh, format document. So zero. OK, so we're on the zero index. And the thing I need to get is the side. Side is by. And then the size. Size is one. Perfect. So side and size, side and size, side and size, side and size. Open position side equals open positions and it was zero here and it was side right and then the same thing for size but the difference is this part size perfect now I want to say if open Position side equals just in case, let's say by. Oops, I think it's that. Then open position bool equals true. Long equals true. Perfect. I can use those later. LF open position side equals just in case cell open position bool equals true and long equals false 
Okay, that makes sense, right? Getting all that information, else open position bool equals false. And long, long equals, let's just do none for now. So now we're gonna say, hey, if the side is by, then we know we're gonna put a bool, open position bool, true, long is true. Else, elif, if it's sell, then it's open position bool is also true, and long equals false, because we're not long. Okay, I think we might have all the information we need now, but let's uh, let's try this out. Let's return open positions for a shizzle. Um, open position bool again for a shizzle. Open position size absolutely and long. Perfect. Okay, now I can drag this around with me. And I might move that up later, but let's see if it just runs. Okay, perfect, perfect. Let's drag this in and... So open position side, let's try this again. So open position should be open positions now. And it'd be one, and that should set a true or false. And then same with this one. Long equals, what is long? Zero, one, two, three. So three, and then size is open positions two, right? Zero, one, two, yep. Perfect, we're doing good, we're doing good. And let's see if it works. I'm looking for this starred line specifically. Ah, yes, there we go. We're getting closer. Okay, now let's not print this whole dictionary because that's annoying. Um, open positions, we don't need to run that anymore. Kill switch, okay, we're really, really close. We're really, really close. Let's make some spacing here. And I'm gonna delete this. And we are almost done with this. This is amazing. I'm, I'm really excited to, to launch this, so. Um, size um, let's call this kill size because this is not just the size this is the size we want to kill because we're in a winning position remember PL close if our PL is over this amount we're doing a kill switch because we want to we want to take our win and our target I believe is 25% we can change that later if needed um, let's delete that kill size and so open position while open position is true we want to do a loop because as long as it's true that means we're still in the position and we haven't exited yet print starting kill switch loop till limit fill perfect and let's do a let's do a temp df just in case i think we might need this nah i don't think we need it but you know we'll just just do it anyways Let's do Phoenix dot cancel all orders because remember we got the kill switch going and if there's like if the market's moving really fast 
we want to get out. We want to get out because we already took our, we, are, we hit our profits. So, so we want to keep, keep it moving. So let's go ahead and say again, open position equals open positions just in case. If you notice, I rewrite a lot of code, but that's okay. Whatever works. So this sets to along. And I just want to get the kill size one more time. I'm just going to copy this over. Kill size. And the reason I'm doing this is because it can change while it's in the while loop. Because it's going to have a sleep. I'm going to put a sleep in it. So kill size. And then I want to make this an integer. Um, kill size int kill size. And let's go ahead and say print. Now let's not do a print. We have enough. Let's say date time is now. And the string of that, mm, I don't need that either actually. I was gonna do some logging, but I think we probably just don't need that right now. Let's get the ask in here. Mm, ask equals, what was it, bid ask? No, it's ask bid. And the ask will be zero, and the bid equals ask bid one. Uno. Okay. Now we have to make the actual bind logic. So we're in a while loop right now. If long equals false, let's cancel all orders just in case. You know, actually, probably don't need to do that again because I cancel them all right here, right? So we're while looping through, starting to kill switch, cancel all orders. Yeah, we don't need to cancel all orders again. Vmix.create limit buy order because we're trying to buy it back. I mean, it could be, yeah, we're trying to buy it back if long, if long equals false. Yeah, so if long equals false, that means we're short, so we have to buy it back. So this is right, this is right. Um, we would put the kill size in here. Kill size. We put the bid because we want to put it at the bid, and then the params. Remember the params make it so. Why? Did, why does this give me an error? see why it would give me an error here so let's just run it not run it but let's keep going print F just made a oh this is why you give me an error sorry don't know why I put that there just made a what are we what are we doing here? Buy to close order of kill size. Right? That sounds about right. Let's put the symbol in here just so we can see at So if we're long, we have to buy back. 
So we'd be bidding. So we wanted to bid. That's right. That's right. Okay, cool. Elif. Elif what though? Elif long is true. We have to sell. Right? We have to sell to get back. So we do Phoenix dot create limit sell order with the symbol uh, kill size the ask because that's right right because if we're in a long is true that means we're longing it longing it longing it, longing it, longing it and we want to sell at the ask because that's the limit yep that makes sense to me um, Got to make sure to pass in the params so we only do post orders. And then we can go ahead and just copy this. Just got to make sure to make the changes. A sell to close, a kill size symbol, and ask. Okay. Now I want to put a little sleep in here. Print sleeping for 30 seconds to see if it fills because I don't want to just keep pressing orders over and over you know exchanges don't like that I don't like that nobody likes that okay okay so let's jump into this next one here print okay perfect so now we have our kill switch I believe um, I'm just gonna do this else print mmm something something I didn't expect and kill switch function perfect okay what else now I want to check if the open position is true because we're doing a while loop right so open position Let's check if it's true one more time after we do all that information because you remember we're sleeping for 30 seconds after we make the buys so it might fill and if it fills then we don't want to keep running it okay I think we're good with this now um, if I run this kill switch right now I'm going to exit or close everything out. I want to test this kill switch. See if it works. And how am I going to test it? Just like this. Super easy. I'm just going to run it. It should. Like, this is a pretty good kill switch. And I really like this, like, um, the way this is set up because it gets the exact size that is open. It's not like you have to depend on your old variables because sometimes what happens is, like, you'll get par partially filled. Like if you're doing 100 contracts and you get filled 25 contracts and your kill switch is based off of your size, then you're gonna, you have 25 contracts open and then you sell 100, now you're short or you're the opposite, right? So let's go ahead and run this. Starting 50 minute SMA, starting the kill switch. You hear that sound, right? Just made a sell to close order of one UBTC at 4, 34 to 80. So I should be sitting right on the bid. Yeah, look at that. So I'm sitting right on the... Oh my God, I've lost 20% on this position. <laughs> but anyways, it's only one uh, contract. It's $1.45. Um, but you can see that it sits right on the bid and then it sleeps for 30 seconds. And then it cancels it, does it again, sleeps for 30 seconds. So this is good. This kill switch is working. That means I think I'm done with the bot. I think I am done with the bot. Look at that. We did it. We did it. I can drink some water now. Next time I will bring some water. But I think, oh, we're not quite done yet. We're not quite done yet. We're not quite. We just have to do one more thing. Delete all of these things that run.
my question is, how did that just happen? How did it just cancel and run again? I thought I just closed. I thought I just killed the bot, but it's got a mind of its own now, or what? PL close. Just going to check the PL close every time through. Holy smokes, this is crazy to me. Oh, I think I didn't kill it. <laughs> I just exited out of the. I was tripping out for a second there. Like, what the heck? How is it still running? All right, so it checks the PL close every time through, checking to see if time to exit. Does all this stuff and says it's the percentage over zero. If it is, then okay, print. We're in a winning position. Perfect. By the way, that just sold. Um, and then if the percentage over target, which my target is 25, then we would say smiley face, we're gonna do PL close and we're gonna hit the kill switch. The kill switch is gonna take us up here and gracefully take us out of the position at limit. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna delete this because I don't want the kill switch to run every time. So I think the last thing we have to do here is um, the last thing we have to do is set this so it runs all the time. I'm just going to write, uh, built this bot that does the below. And it's that to build in or tomorrow or something. So if you want to see that, let me know any type of bot you want to see done. I obviously have a huge, huge list of strategies that I'm building. Um, and I'm going to create, create them here on, on YouTube because I, the way I feel is like, this is just, everybody tries to be so like secretive about this world, this quant world, this algo trading world, but it's just like, anybody can do it. I swear to God. <laughs> so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run this every 30 seconds. So how do we do that? So I'm going to delete that. Um, if I hit play, nothing should happen. Perfect. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Why are you happening? Starting SMA. Who invited you to work? This is why we triple check things. Got it. Right there. Now this should run nothing. What the heck? Whatever. Run ask bid. It's probably from this. DFD. Do I need this anywhere? I don't think I need it. And I don't think I need this either. Okay. Now it should run nothing. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm ready to set this up. This is my last couple lines of code and we are off in under 300 lines of code, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Schedule dot every, uh, let's do this, uh, for example, right now, 10 seconds. And do, uh, what did I call it, bot? I think I called it bot. Yeah, bot, bot, bot. And then let's set a while loop, while true, should be always try because there can be shaky internet where I am schedule run pending and then accept so the reason I do this is because you know whatever happens your internet goes out whatever then it will keep running you don't have to like reset it maybe an internet prob or something and then let's run it again in 30 seconds okay cool we got it perfect 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 this bot should work now let's run it let's see what happens i'm just gonna run it i'm just gonna run it and see if we get any errors let's see if we get any buys any sells wait 10 seconds remember it's scheduled every 10 seconds it's about 10 seconds starting up now it's starting up. We're starting indicators, checking to see. This is our sell price. There it is. Buys. So it made the two buys right there. 
we're Gucci. We are good to go. Making the sell, checking to see, setting indies, canceling and putting them again. Okay, so we're great. We're doing great, the bot works. Um, I'm super happy about this. I need to do one thing that I forgot. Um, Time.sleep, create, mm, create. We forgot to put this, uncheck those sleeps because we're just gonna send them every, let's do it every 60 seconds. No, I actually don't need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do 30 seconds because I'm going to run this bot every 30 seconds anyways. So, nah, I want it more. I want more, I want more, I want more. Uh, let's do 120 seconds. So it'll sleep for two minutes after it makes the buys. Or after it makes the opening orders, it'll sleep for two minutes. But also, we're only going to run this every 28 seconds, 30 seconds. But I think it takes about two seconds to run through the code. So... Theoretically, what's going to happen is it makes the buys. It's going to sleep for two minutes. Just open, just made opening order. So going to sleep for two minutes. Perfect. Sorry, I'm really excited now. I love finishing a bot because now it's just like I sit back and I see if it works. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if you really enjoyed this, like all I ask is hit a like, like on the video. I mean, that's all I need. If I get a couple likes and I'll make a new video tomorrow. And um, I, I literally sit here all day and make algos like this. Uh, I, you know, obviously I, I do some, some sneaky things as well with machine learning and uh, a lot of deeper strategies than this but you can see my process now and as i mentioned i'm just a regular regular old dude that you saw what happens when i get stuck i just google it <laughs> just ask google like that's all let's run this i'm just gonna let it run now because it's gonna sleep for 30 seconds or it's gonna run in 30 seconds so i'm pretty good to go if you want to learn more I, I put together a boot camp that's a lot more like straightforward organized and step by step so you can go from you know beginner to expert algo trader um that there's a link for that somewhere around here but really the one thing i do ask is just if, if you've made it this far just hit the like button um just to signal that you enjoyed this if you have any questions or comments or anything um please do let me know in the comment section below i'm super excited i'll maybe i'll make a follow-up if you're interested um in how this went um, I've got a ton of videos on algo trading on my, my YouTube channel. So, you know, if you're not ready to just take a structured boot camp where I teach you step by step in short videos, as opposed to this nice long algo video, um, and you want access to all my algos, um, I have that boot camp, of course. But if you're not ready to join that, no worries. I have a ton of free videos here on YouTube, and I'll put another video up here um, on the screen, like right now. So you can go check it out and we can just keep jamming and keep, uh, keep working together on building out you know, this empire. So I'll put that screen on, a video on the screen right now. If, go ahead and check out the boot camp. Um, there's a link below, but otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun today building this bot out with you. And that video on the screen right now is where I will see you in just two seconds or in the boot camp. So see you soon.